<laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. It's wonderful to be able to study the Word of God in this second Sunday of the month of March. So remember, March is a challenging month for us. Our theme for the whole year is opportunities beyond. So we have chances and uh, responsibilities and blessings uh, that are given to us this year. Though it's a very, very difficult year because of the pandemic, when there are, are many difficulties, the opportunities are also beyond imagination. And the month of March, we have the theme serving without reservation. So have we experienced doing something for someone without reservation for married people? When you said yes to the one you love and then you decided to get married, start a family. So you uh, start to serve each other without reservation because the exhortation of uh, during the wedding is uh, till death do us part. So that is uh, serving without reservation. And in the same way, because uh, being uh, saved by Jesus Christ is like being getting married to a person who loves us so much, Jesus Christ. And when we accepted him as our personal savior, we promised to serve him without reservation. And uh, so we continue this beautiful uh, message about uh, the love of God and serving him. That's why uh, this afternoon, I have entitled the message that I have uh, uh, studied to give uh, this afternoon, True Servanthood. The Lord wants us to be servants, and we will always be His servants, now and forever. And He will always be God, so we can never be God. And because of that, when we bow before Him, as our God and Savior. We will always be His servants. Have, we have to be content with it. And the amazing thing about being a servant of the Lord is that when we surrender in servanthood to Him, then we uh, receive joy, joy without compare, joys eternal, and joys that will give us all the success that we have been looking for. That is the joy of being one with the Lord as his servant and son of God through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is why I have uh, chosen uh, for our uh, text uh, right now, John chapter 13. And uh, I would like to read to you verses 3 to, uh, to 5. May I request you please to stand as I read the word of God. I read to you from John 13, 3 to 5. Jesus, knowing that the Father has given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, rose from supper and laid aside his garments, took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel with which he was girded. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you for this amazing uh, experience that Jesus gave his disciples that shows us the true servanthood of the believer in Jesus Christ. And we want in our lives today, we will have the same kind of servanthood so, so that we'll achieve true happiness and true success in life. So bless us as we study your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. I have entitled my message, True Servanthood. We are all, in a sense, servants when we are employed in 
a company, you are, in a sense, servant of the company. When somebody runs for office in government as mayor, governor, or any government official, he is supposed to be a servant to the people, serving the Filipino people. So servanthood is a very, very important uh, responsibility and lesson for human beings. Because wherever we go, we must always have servanthood in all aspects of our lives. But here the Bible tells us through Jesus Christ uh, the true servanthood. So in connection with this, I will we will study two things. Type of servanthood and uh, true servanthood. So first of all, as we look it here, I did here, we uh, we find that uh, uh, Jesus Christ was uh, now in the upper room together with his disciples in John 13, and he was telling them because that he will leave them soon, and this upper room experience will be the final time time to meet his disciples, because by tomorrow morning he will be arrested and by tomorrow noon he will be nailed to the cross and by tomorrow afternoon 3 p.m. he will die so this is some kind of the longest day in the life of the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ and from the time he has given this important message to his disciples up to the time he will die on the cross. So, lapit kayo more than uh, more than uh, thirty or thirty or thirty-five hours. Now, uh, awaken siya, the longest uh, waking time sa iyang kinabuhi as a man. So, here are different types of servanthood that the Lord is giving his disciples. He said, uh, first, if you want to be a servant, yes. You must have influence. Tinood yun na. Kung nalagad ka sa somebody, kita ang iyang na-influence niya kita. So we have to be willing to follow his influence. And uh, in the human standpoint, when uh, you are trying to show your influence, that means you are showing your power. Sikat ka. So you must obey me. Whatever I tell you, sundon mo. So that is uh, uh, influence, showing power. But what does the Lord say in uh, uh, our message last Sunday, Philippians chapter 2? He said, uh, if uh, you want to serve me, you want to be my disciples, never mind the power. What I tell you in Philippians chapter 2, the Lord said, I want you to love people serve people this is the key to influence the key to real power it is not uh, having a leverage over people to show that you are above them and you are the boss no if you want to show that you have influence over them you must love them because only through love can you truly you can truly give your most powerful influence upon them. Second here, uh, the Bible, the Word of God tells in connection with servanthood, not only influence but confidence. If uh, you want that uh, everybody will be under you, you must show them confidence. In the human, uh, uh, human or worldly uh, situation people want to compete and win have you not observed that in your company where you're working as an engineer or as an office worker or as uh, somebody uh, within the company that produces important products sold to the world so what do you do you compete and win show yourself you're better than the other one and then you will win you will become the 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 head of your group 
and later on maybe you will have a higher p position who knows someday you will become the manager of your company so confidence compete and win but no in the uh, work of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the standard of Jesus Christ those people who want to depend who uh, want to be somebody the Lord wants them to depend on God this was uh, what uh, uh, the Apostle Paul was saying in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 we are not somebody we have really nothing in fact we will lose what we have now that's why uh, we will lose them someday but if we depend on God we will never lose anything because we will gain more and more power as we go towards the end of our lives so another important thing that people want in this world that only influence or confidence they also want authority they want be want to be the one who commands you, okay you go there you do this you do that and because of that in the secular uh, world of business people strive to have authority by claiming they have the right and the possession so you will say I, I have the right because I have the best record in the company or the best uh, uh, worker of the month so I have been awarded this and that and I possess a lot of knowledge a lot of uh, skill in leadership and I I am able to make this company produce more so will you become authoritative but no the Lord said in uh, in the success before God the Lord wants us to be servants Matthew 20 20 to 28 he who is the greatest among you should be the servant the Lord was the disciples feet so that for him was true leadership by being the best or the lowest servant of all because it is uh, true success in life to learn how to be a servant without uh, desiring anything higher than that and the Lord will give you the highest position or the highest reward of all someday so influence confidence authority organize yes people want to organize so that they can build a company or build a business or can build something big for his family and in the eyes of people so in in the standard of the, of the world in the secular world that means uh, oh, we must organize or demand of people demand them to do this to do that standards in the company there are always goals to be met and so the chairman or the manager will demand people okay you must reach the target this month you must reach the target this year you must reach all the goals of our company so because of that they organize and organize and then they demand and they demand but in the Christian life as we serve the Lord it is not the organization that the Lord wants this is servanthood and in servanthood what do we do Acts 19 8 to 10 we develop people this is what uh, the Apostle Paul tell, told the brethren as uh, uh, he w was leaving his mission work to go to Rome and in Rome uh, later on he will be arrested and so he was telling the Christians and the deacons he said remember as uh, Christians in churches develop your people to grow in the Lord and in service develop them in leadership of leading people to the Lord develop them in in service to do more for others so that they too will follow the Lord Jesus Christ so organize organize but uh, in the Christian life 
we need what we need is develop develop in the secular world people will say demand demand but uh, in the Christian world according to the standards of Christ let us develop people let us make them grow and so after influence confidence authority organized we want vision yes it's always good to have vision even in our church we have vision even in our family we give vision to our children so in the secular world we want people to emphasize temporal gain vision for higher salary vision for expansion of the company vision for more uh, uh, ability to expand the business and reach maybe not only the Philippines but beyond but in the Christian life in the Word of God the Bible tells us no our vision is eternal going eternal gain Matthew chapter 6 6 first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you so what we want is eternal gain when we seek God first then the rest of the other material things the Lord will add or even if he does not add never mind that because in heaven he will add that to us what is more important for us is completing what God wants us to do in this life until the end of time and so after we organize and after we show our vision and there we are the last thing here is success so this is the end goal of servanthood success so from influence confidence authority organize organization vision then we'll have success but all that in a godly way well in the secular world in order to have success what do people do they overcome competition so sometimes in companies where we are working people seem to compete against each other and they watch each other for any new moves and then we want to do more before the manager or before the administrators of the company so that we will get the highest position but in the Christian life no in order to have eternal gain we will want to obey the Lord first Corinthians chapter 4 1 to 5 but this, the most important is not we get or not we gain but what we do to uh, obey the Lord even the lowest and the hardest assignment that is the most important thing this is the real kind of success resulting from vision that we want to accomplish in the Lord so remember that to all our members here business people professionals as we strive to bar towards better things in our lives let us follow these principles of servanthood that the Lord is giving us in the Word of God and that leads us to the second and the final thought here not only the type of servanthood that is the kind that Jesus Christ has shown us and is willing is willing, going to give us because this is the best kind of servanthood the result is true servanthood the servanthood that uh, will uh, uh, be the best of all because this is what was the Christ the servant the Christ the servant leader so the Lord wants us to be leaders but servant leaders in the world we always want to be leaders mayors governors or politicians number one but in the Christian life the true servanthood of the Christian is uh, to make Christ our leader so that we, he will develop us to become a servant leader so have you discovered that the will of God for all of us is to be servant leaders so before the leadership is the servanthood and that is what he wants to give us so here are several practical things from the Word of God 
as based from what I have just read to you in uh, John chapter 13. Uh, these are the sermon of the Lord Jesus Christ in the upper room after the Last Supper he spent with his disciples on the night before he was arrested. Number one here, motivated by love. So here in John 13, it says here, Jesus knew that his hour has come, that he should depart from the world to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Wow, that's a very beautiful, very deep statement. Motivated by love. Jesus Christ was motivated by love. So like him, we must always be motivated by the love of Christ. The love of Christ, Paul said, constrains me or leads me and develops me and makes me go the love of Christ alone. And may we have that kind of love. Second here, secure to serve. Here, verse 3, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, that he had come from God, was going to God, rose from supper and laid aside his garments, took a towel and girded himself. And he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet. Jesus was not proud. He wasn't saying, ah, Anak San Dios, I will give my life to save the world. So why should I wash their feet? Dapat sila, they should wash my feet before I go to the cross. So that is not satanic way of thinking. But the Lord said, no, I have to wash your feet before I go to the cross. He was secure to serve. He was not afraid to be somebody in the lowest position because he knew he goes the lower he stoops the higher he will rise so i hope all of us in the lord jesus christ will have the same power we will not be afraid to sweep the floor or wash the plates the plates or wash the clothes no because we are in jesus christ so confident so secure to serve but in our level if we are so ashamed to work ashamed that people will see us working with your very high position now so that means you are still insecure because jesus christ has no insecurity at all the highest is willing to wash the feet number three he initiated service so here he was disciples feet in john 13 and uh, he took a towel and uh, washed them and he was not afraid to do that he was the one who initiated started the lowly service so the greater we become the more intelligent and very brilliant we become the more we are not afraid to initiate a humbling service for others because this is the sign of true greatness like the lord jesus christ the greatest of all he took uh, the, the towel and washed the disciples feet number four therefore he served others and so you remember here the story yeah, peter was so sorry that uh, uh, the Lord is washing his feet. He said, Lord, so if you wash my feet, Lord, Sometimes uh, the the commentator here that I was reading, see si, si Pedro from one extreme to the other extreme. The one extreme first he saying, Lord, don't wash my feet because you are Lord. You should not wash my feet, my feet. I will be the one to wash your feet. Now that the Lord said, no, if you want to be the greatest, you must wash each other's feet. So yung naman ni Pedro, extreme naman siya. He said, Lord, so therefore, Lord, liguan lang ko. 
Ay, gawa na ako. Ay, si, so, si katawan, katawan na sa ay si Pedro, no? Okay. From one extreme to the other extreme. The Lord said, no. I don't have to bath you. Because if I have washed your feet, it's already as good as giving a bath for your whole body. So si, it seems si Pedro, hinay kayo magsabot sa gina tudlo sa ginoo. So, serve others and never be afraid to wash people's feet and serve them. So number five, uh, verses eight and nine, we did not read this, uh, but I will read this, eight, uh, John 13, eight. Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, if I do not wash your feet, you have no part with me. So Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my feet. And Jesus said to him, he who is bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean, and you are clean, but not all of you. So the Lord was saying here, Subra, subra ka naman, Pedro. <laughs> so, we must be the one to ser initiate service and serve others. And number four, we must open to God for everything that is in our lives. Because God says, Jesus, as he told Peter, if I do not wash your feet, so you have no part with me. And so he said, Lord, tanan na lang, Lord. Well, the Lord was saying here, not subra subra ka naman, Pedro, no? In a way, what is important is you are open to what I tell you. You are open to what I teach you. We are, I, you are open to what I give you. So all of us, as we learn the Lord, even during these times of pandemic, we are open to the Lord, open to the Lord during times are good. But we are also open to the Lord when times are bad. And this time of pandemic, these are bad times. But we are open to the Lord to come to church, to worship Him, and to do His will. So praise the Lord for that. So what the Lord wants is servant by example. So here, verse 12. So when He had washed their feet, taken His garments, and sat down again, He said to them, Do you know? what they have done to you? 13. You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done. What a beautiful lesson the Lord is saying here. The higher we become in our Christian lives, the lower we are willing to serve even the simplest servant or the simplest person in our community. So the higher our responsibility and our greatness, the lower we are willing to do for others when we, they need our head, our help. And so, the Lord finally is talking here about the blessed life, the blessed kind of Christian life that we ought to have. So verses 16 and 17, I read to you, 16 and 17. Most absurdly I say to you, a servant is sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Uh, the blessedness, the blessed life, is the willingness to be a servant of all, just like the Lord Jesus Christ. So what is the lesson here, brethren? What, do we, what does the Lord want us to do? Here are important lessons that I have not uh, printed there in the notes. Here are important lessons that we can do in our practical life. Number one, put others ahead of you all the time never mind our social standing 
or our position in kind of business or profession, let us always put others ahead. Because that is what the Lord wants us to do for them, them so that they will surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ through us. Number two, confidence and security to take risk. So the higher we go up in our maturity in the Christian life, the more we are not afraid to take the risk to serve others. It's wonderful to take the risk. Many years ago, we took the risk of leaving our work in Pontevedra to go to Cebu to start the Cebu Association of Baptist Churches. So we are here. And we have that civil association now because we gladly volunteer to give our lives to come to Cebu to build churches and start the Cebu Association of Baptist Churches. So we must be confident and secure to take any risk to do anything for God's glory and the Lord will bless us. Number three, look for needs and take the initiative to feel it everywhere somewhere right or left in the street in our office in our building in our community people have needs and we can take the initiative to help them so that we can be servants like jesus christ number four perform small acts anonymously when we are already famous people are we willing to do something for someone there in the street he does not know us but we are willing to go and help him and then he will ask us kinsa ka sir so you just answer a friend willing to help you in the name of jesus so willing to be anonymous there is an organization named anonymous incorporated there are people, civic people, in our community who help others without giving their names. So anonymous. Christians should always be like that. Number five, walk slowly through the cloud. Sometimes when we are professionals, we are always in a hurry when we walk in the street. Dali, dali, kita pas pas Time na. Si manager, agaulat na, or somebody waits for me. But you know, have you noticed Jesus Christ in the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John when he walks? He walks slowly. He walks slowly so that one day he was walking and then he saw uh, the blind and the man that who needs your help. And Zacchaeus there up there in the tree because Jesus was walking slowly. He saw Zacchaeus. He said, come down. I will eat with you in your house today so this what resulted was a very very beautiful story walk slowly through the crowd and see people who have needs whom the lord will bring to your uh, life the day number six begin day uh, begin the day by reflection on love for others just like the lord jesus christ whom can I love pe today? Or before I go to sleep tonight, whom can I love to show love of the Lord? And number seven and number one, the last, develop a bias for action. I mean, so a bias for helping people, a bias for understanding people, a bias for listening, even if you're very, very busy, a bias to help others. That was what jesus christ did all the time that was what god did god so loved the world he gave his only son that's what people of the lord did no? uh, from the beginning uh, abraham and moses and david all those great people they had a bias for action willing to do action for the glory of the lord so this is servanthood true servanthood that the Lord wants us to have today, this week, this month, this year. So may our life be a life of service. And may we be biased towards servanthood towards others if they need us. 
and may the Lord give us the grace to do it. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you for your word and the challenge it gives us from all the people that Jesus met here and the challenge that they uh, bring to our lives. May we apply it and though today or this week, every day of our lives until Jesus Christ comes. Help us to be the servants of the greatest master of all, Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen.